I'm a first-generation American-born Indian. I was thankful that throughout my upbringing, it felt like I had equal exposure to my American environment as well as my Indian roots. And as I entered my university and began taking photography courses, I noticed that a large portion of my work centered around the theme of culture and identity. I thought, what would be more of a logical step than to travel to Tamil Nadu, India, the region where my family had immigrated from, and conduct a documentary photography project there. And so I did. I traveled to India in December of 2014 and stayed there to interact with the locals and learn about their life and their experiences. I wanted to get a better sense of what these people's stories were. And prior to leaving, I recognized that this was a complex endeavor that telling the story of another person had a large responsibility attached to it. But it wasn't until I was actually in India that I began realizing what a complex responsibility this actually is to absorb the story of another person and to share it with someone else. I accumulated over 8,000 photographs and hours of video recorded interviews. And interwived in those moments were really, really compelling and moving times where someone would sit with me on the porch of their house and tell me hours about themselves. And I learned lessons there that I wanted to convey to other people. I'm going to be showing you a few different photographs that I had taken of the region. And I'll be posing rhetorical questions that I'd like you to consider deeply. What do you think is occurring in this image? Who do you think these people are? And what do you think they're doing? Is this a daily event, or, does, or is it a special occurrence? What do you think these people's relations are? What can you derive from the proximity of the bodies and of the objects next to each other about the culture? Now, how do you think that you're analysis of these questions and of this photograph relates to anyone else's analysis. Does any one person have the correct interpretation? Is that even possible? Now, what does this allude to about human cognition, about our perception of other people? How accurate are we, irrelevant of what we think we actually are thinking is correct or not? A photograph is not an opinion, or is it, says American academic Susan Sontag. Is something that's a snapshot really subjective, or is it objective like we might think it is? Now let's look at this image. Who do you think this man is? It looks like he's making something that something seems to be a pot. What is the attitude with which he's making that pot? What can you tell from his body language? It seems that he's wearing a red cloth around his lower torso. Is he wearing that red cloth because that's all he has, or is he wearing it because that's what he wants to wear? Now, observe how your interpretation of this image might shift when I provide to you more context, background information about this person. Pot making has been in his uh, family for generations. And his eight-year-old granddaughter was at his house at the time that I had visited. And she told me about how she wanted to grow up to also be a pot maker, and that she also wanted to be a teacher. This photograph was taken when it was around 90 degrees and humid. And so maybe that red cloth is very comfortable for that temperature. And if you look a little bit closer into the image, someone that is sensitive to the culture might actually pick up on this white string that's draped around his upper torso that we might otherwise overlook. This white string represents having earned the privilege to study the Hindu scriptures the Vedas. 
So what does that also tell you about this man? This background information, how does it shift your perception of someone else? In my photography work, I realized that as I returned from India, I wanted to be sure to be providing context for each of my images, because sometimes the images alone were simply too exotic and maybe too beautiful. And so I provided background information through <coughs> incorporating text. With every image that I presented, I made sure that there was a semi-translucent sheet that was covering that photograph that included a paragraph of text. And that text provided background information about whatever the photograph was of. I wanted to be sure that the viewer would read this information simultaneously to viewing the photograph and then flip that semi-translucent sheet and be greeted by the full vibrancy of the image and be able to interpret what's happening with more clarity and with a better understanding and sensitivity. Human cognition is a fascinating thing. At this particular moment, all five of your senses are very active. You hear words which are perceived from sound waves that are entering your ear. If you bring attention, you can feel the way your fingers feel against one another, the way your foot feels against the bottom of your shoe. If you bring attention, you can draw out different aspects within your visual field. How is it that light rays can hit the back of our retina and then be perceived as objects that we derive meaning in a three-dimensional world from? How incredible is that? This, in, this large and overwhelming amount of sensory information has been evolved. We've evolved to utilize this information in categories. We categorize our sensory stimuli so that way we can better interact with our world. We come to recognize that a chair is a chair and we can use that chair without being overwhelmed by the amount of sensory stimulation that's occurring. And what happens though when we project the sensory stimulation onto people? In my opinion, this is where we run into trouble. In my opinion, humans are simply too complex to be categorized. But we do that anyway. We force humans into buckets of gender, of socioeconomic status, of religion, of race. And we, we pick up on these categories and we form judgments about them because it has worked for our other, our other categories of non-human beings. That served as functional in our human evolution, but now as we interact with others and integrate as a more global society, is this categorization of humans problematic? Is this stereotyping of people problematic? I want you to think closely about what I'm trying to tell you with this image. Try to pick up on the subtle details of this photograph. There's a girl, and she's standing somewhat like I am right now. You see that she seems pretty composed at first glance, but when you look a little bit closer, her feet are curled under her own standing. What does that tell you about how uncomfortable she might be in the moment? Similarly, you look at her hands, and although her hands are crossed, her fingers are actually protruded. What does that tell you about some types of discomfort? What can you read about her facial expression? In India, a common social norm is for people to wear gold. It's a symbol of coming from a well-off family or well-off circumstance, such that a person is financially sufficient and stable. In India, I made sure not to wear any gold. I went out of my way, and I wanted to be sure that I would come off to people as someone that was genuinely curious about them. I didn't want to project portions of my background onto them that might inhibit me formulating a connection with that person. Because I realized that when we 
approach another individual with sincerity, humility, and respect, that really incredible things can happen. That the interest that we show in another person can be reciprocated. And there's nothing that can replace that. Now, is this girl wearing any gold? Why not? Let me provide some context for you. This girl is younger than myself. I spent hours with her as she showed me around her village. She told me about how she stopped going to school in sixth grade because school simply wasn't entering her head, she told me. She said that instead, she helps her family tend to their business of rope making. Day in and day out, her family makes rope from hay. And in addition to helping her family with this business, she also helps with household chores. She told me about how she never left her own hometown. And that she had other desires. She told me about how her family was speaking of marrying her off soon. And the way that she said that to me, I said, I recognized that it seemed a little bit against her will. So I asked her, if your family had not had this plan for you, what is it that you would want to do instead? She said that she would want to do what I was doing, that she would want to go on an adventure and explore the world. Now let that sink in for a moment. Someone just told me that they want to experience what I'm experiencing and what perhaps we all are right now to interact with others of different backgrounds and to learn from them. So this diversity that we have access to, or that some of us have access to, is a privilege. Not everyone has this access to diversity. So when did diversity become a problem? When did it become a source of cultural conflict? And ought it to be a source of cultural conflict? Perhaps even if humans had evolved to have stereotypes, because maybe it's been a form of efficiency in the past. Maybe the next step of our evolution is to recognize that stereotyping individuals might actually be problematic. Maybe there's a kernel of truth every now and then, but perhaps we have to look further than what meets the eye. Similar to how your interpretation of images could have been improved provided background context, was informed when I provided a background story of what was actually going on in a photograph, that we perhaps ought to do the same in everyday situations. Because the cultural biases that we use to interpret any given moment is the same that we project onto the world at large. So in our daily experiences, whatever we use to interpret a photograph is the same that we use to interpret each of our experiences. I think that we're at a unique point in society where this globalization has united us more than ever before. That this girl who's younger than myself is craving to experience what we are means that this responsibility of being more sensitive to people and to situations is, is the next step for how we interact with others. That's similar to how when we view an image we don't know the depth and dynamics of what's happening in that photograph. We don't know the depth and dynamics and the stories behind the individuals that we interact with every single day. So when aspects like race, religion, and gender, and socioeconomic status are stereotyped to function as a human society, perhaps we ought to move beyond that and to ask questions, and to provide context for ourselves about who it is that we're interacting with. Thank you.